Yes, yeah. don't look at that. <laughs> Just cue um, when you want the lights. Oh, the lights can, yeah, they can go off. Yeah. Okay. Whoops, not in the back. Is that okay? One more. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mark, and thank you to Nasser for this very kind invitation. Uh, I am I'm delighted to be here and particularly honored to be here um, in a lecture series devoted to Arshak Megarian. I met him uh, in 1998 and that initiated a, uh, a series of wonderful conversations about architecture, uh, and I was always struck by his unbounded enthusiasm and zeal for the subject and generosity with his knowledge. And I also remember him showing me in the basement of your house in Wellesley these amazing architectural models that he had constructed. So um, the subject of this, this lecture um, is maybe particularly appropriate, and I think he would have he would have enjoyed the subject. So, um, the title the title can you hear me? The title the title uh, is um, the tiny churches of medieval Armenia, and I don't mean by any means to say that Armenian churches are small in general. I mean this is not some kind of denigration. What I'm talking about is the really tiny churches of medieval Armenia. Most people know about the, the life-size churches, but in fact there is a striking tradition of tiny churches as well that were built at this time. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, can I have the first slide? Okay, so I'm going to start, I hate to do this, I'm going to start with a question of you. And the question is, how many churches do you see in this uh, image? Okay, so you see one, right, you see one here. Do you see any more? Anything else? You see one right here, maybe? Right here? There's a tiny one here. I'll just, I'll just tell you that there are actually three more that are visible in this slide, and I'm going to point them out to you. There's one here, a tiny church. There's one here. We'll look at close-ups a bit later. And there's one right over here. These are tiny churches that were built onto the main church of Hakpat. So we'll return to that later. But just to give you a sense of these sort of micro buildings that were that were added to the church. So could I have the next one? Okay, this is not an Armenian slide. But the point is that building miniature buildings was not something that was um, exclusive to Armenia. There were other traditions that built these small um, objects, whether they were shrines or other kinds of things. I'm showing you one example of um, a model, a ceramic model, uh, from West Mexico that's now in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And this one dates to 100 BC to AD 200. So certainly other traditions had this, uh, um, you know, practice of model making. And can I have the next one? And of course, maybe more famous is the Renaissance tradition of model making, um, like the example you see here. This is Filippo Brunelleschi's famous uh, model for the Duomo of Florence, the Duomo for the Santa Maria del Fiore church in uh, Florence um, from the 15th century. So in the Renaissance, there was a tremendous tradition of building models of churches. And if you just um, press enter again, you can see through this animation, that um, this, this is a fairly close uh, kind of um, um, portrait, if you like, of the church. Uh, so in the ancient world and in the Renaissance, we do have, in certain geographical areas, the tradition of making models. But if we start looking at the Middle Ages in particular, all the period between the, those two, um, we don't find so much. Um, one place where we do find representations of architecture, that is, sort of pictures of buildings, is in um, uh, Byzantium. And if you go to the next slide, so here's a very uh, famous mosaic from the 10th century, a Byzantine mosaic, showing um, Justinian, the Emperor Justinian on the left, and um, Constantine on the right. And Justinian is holding in his hands, can you just do the next one? Um, a model, a detail of the Hagia Sophia. So he's presenting this little model of the church 
um, to the Virgin and Child. Um, but in Byzantium, as elsewhere in the Middle Ages, there is no real uh, sort of robust tradition of making architectural models. Um, could I have the next one? Okay. So we have, again, this is another example of a Byzantine wall painting, donor holding a model. The next one. Okay. But, but, and this is the interesting thing, in Armenia um, and in Georgia, you see these stone models produced, uh, tremendous numbers of stone models. So it's really, I think, fascinating and not very much remarked upon that um, we don't have any real comparisons for this material. And yet, um, despite this, despite the kind of unique nature of this, uh, material, it's, it's really not discussed. No one really talks about it. So maybe some of you haven't heard of these, these interesting stone models. The example I'm showing you here is um, in the Yerevan Historical Museum. It's one of the most photographed of the stone models. Um, it's only a few feet tall. Um, as you can see, it's made of stone and takes the form of a centralized church with a dome, what's called a pumpkin dome. Um, and it has a large door, so the, there's a hollow cavity inside. We think it dates to around the 7th century, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit more later. But I'm showing you this just in the, as an example of what these models look like in, um, in Armenia. So, um, interesting, but not very much studied. Can I have the next slide? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, the problem. That is the problem of these architectural models. How do we study them? What do they mean? Um, could you just... So the first, um, the initial work on the models was in the form of archaeological reports. People like Nikolai Marr, the famous archaeologist from Ani, um, unearthed uh, several models and wrote up reports of them in his, in his records. Um, so these formed some of the first mentions we had in the literature of the models. Um, mostly in the form of descriptions and some, you know, a little bit of historical uh, discussion. The next one, please. Yes, thank you. Um, and, and following that, um, you would find, you find in the literature a great deal of discussion in terms of specific models. For example, a model was found at the church of Zvartnots, famous 7th century church. Um, and so that was discussed in the context of the church of Zvartnots. But until 1969, could I have the next one? No, um, no scholar had really treated this material. Uh, so it was in 1969 that an Italian scholar by the name of Paolo Cuneo um, published in the Revue des Etudes Arméniennes, this famous uh, French Armenian journal, um, a catalog of these models, about 40 models, um, and a description of them. And in it, he categorized them in terms of how he thought they functioned. Um, it's a, you know, looking back on it, there are lots of questions we can ask, lots of holes we can poke in his discussions, but the point is that Cuneo produced this uh, really important foundation for the study of these models. And since then, believe it or not, really very little has been written. Maybe a couple of um, uh, mentions in publications, but that's about it. Despite the fact that they're, they're really interesting and really unparalleled elsewhere in the medieval world. 